Um, so I'm going to do like a brief like introduction or survey to like the simplicities of relativity. So uh, yeah. So um, there's like different portions of relativity. There's three main parts. There's classical relativity, uh, special relativity, and general relativity, which was all thanks to Albert Einstein, which was way back in the early 1900s when he was already thinking about space travel and quantum physics. So uh, one absolute that we need to understand is that there is no such thing as absolute motion or absolute rest, because things are always in motion, and objects move relative to each other. So uh, an example of objects moving relative to each other is if this truck is, there's a truck moving 50 miles per hour, um, and then these kids are throwing the ball, say, at 10 miles per hour, um, they're not actually seeing the ball travel at 50 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour, they actually see it as being thrown at 10 miles per hour because relative to the truck, they're moving with the truck. But if their friend over here is standing on the ground and watching the truck go by, he sees whenever the ball is tossed this way with the motion of the truck, he sees the ball traveling at 60 miles per hour. And then when the ball, this kid throws the ball back and it goes this way, you subtract 10 from 50, and he sees the ball being thrown at 45 miles per hour, even though they see it being thrown at 10 miles per hour, because it's all relative to everybody's position in each scenario. Um, so example of that is things are always in motion. So even though he may be standing still, the Earth itself, itself is still in motion, and then the sun, and then our Milky Way galaxy is still in motion. So there's always constant motion, and there's never absolute standing still. Moving on to special relativity, um, another absolute we need to understand is the speed of light is the same for all observers. So if you take uh, Alex and Bill here, and you put a beam of light bouncing back and forth between um, the two mirrors, the light should bounce on the bottom mirror at the same time as Alex, but they both should hit the same time. But as we see here with this nice little GIF I was able to make, um, his light I hope it didn't stop. Well, it's our never ending loop. But right when it gets to the end here, you notice it bounces at the same time on the bottom when it gets to the top. Right here, when it stops, his is already hitting the top, but his isn't because um, when uh, added to motion, moving light travels longer distance, making uh, meaning that it takes more time for the beam to travel since the top one is in motion, uh, which is called um, time dilation. <coughs> And in order to understand relativity, one must stop thinking about time as a fixed unit because time itself is relative. So in order for that to actually work, the reason why um, it looks like it's going, like the, the top person's is going slower per se, is because speed or uh, distance is directly proportional to the time. So if the distance is, is doubled, then the time it takes for the actual light to bounce between each one is doubled. Since the distance is increased, time itself has to be increased. And in a sense, it looks as though his time is actually being slowed down. So if there, were a, if there was a clock next to the two guys with the light beam, Bill on the bottom, his clock would be going at a normal pace. But for Alex on top, his clock, his minute would be longer than Bill's actual minute because the light's traveling. And then another component of special relativity is, uh, is length contraction. And because it isn't actually exactly proportional, the, uh, the distance and time don't increase the exact same amount. So in order for the time to actually match up, the uh, time, time doesn't dilate enough for the speed itself to stay constant, which is why it seems like it slows down. So what also happens is if you look in this picture, Alex's whole object itself is actually smaller, which is, would be his length contraction, because as an object approaches closer to the speed of light, the object itself gets smaller and starts to contract, which makes up for the reason why it looks like it, it looks like it's hitting at the same time, but the only reason it is is because of his speed and the time dilation and length contraction. Yes? No? Kind of makes sense? Yeah. OK. <laughs> um, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, so time dilation plus length contraction 
is what gives you the reason why the speed of light remains the same in relativity to everybody else. Um, and then everybody's favorite part that they want to know uh, is time travel. Um, so as time slows down, slows down for objects traveling closer to the speed of light, so that the speed of light is here. That would have been Brittany. Oh. She fell? I don't know. <laughs> So if the speed of light is here, as you get closer to the speed of light, yeah, time, time starts to slow down. And then once you reach the speed of light, the theory is that time itself stands still once you're traveling the speed of light. And then the theory is once you're, past, once you're going faster than the speed of light, then essentially, since it slows down, that means time should start going backwards once you go faster than the speed of light. But this has never been tested because we don't have an object that can go fast enough, faster than the speed of light. Because in order to um, go, in order to go as fast as the speed of light, you have to have an unlimited amount of energy, and we have yet to um, obtain a way of providing a limited amount of energy to an object. And then the third portion of uh, relativity is general relativity. And uh, Einstein, this is his theory over here on the right, he believed that um, objects in space, such as planets and stars, uh, warp space-time around them and cause the area around it to become curved. As a result, objects experience gravitational attraction to each other. So he doesn't think that it's actually, there's like this mysterious like matter in the air that actually causes gravity, but it's the objects in space itself which causes the angles and everything to be sucked in by the object because it's kind of penetrating the space-time itself. So. And then, uh, if none of that made sense with relativity, uh, Einstein once said, when you're courting a nice girl, an hour seems like a second. When you sit on a red-hot cinder, a second seems like an hour. That's relativity. <laughs> Good job.